Life is full of conversations and meetings that we'd rather not have, but it is important to communicate effectively with people. Therefore, would it not be helpful if we all could become better communicators? Leo Lowndes has spent her life studying communication and helping people become better communicators. She's noticed the habits that can make people more effective communicators and all the little things that trip them up when they're communicating. For decades, she's been releasing books filled with do's and don'ts, specifically designed to help people navigate everyday communication. This summary dives into some of the basic things you can do to become better at communicating your ideas. Here are the top 7 lessons from Leo Lowndes' How to Talk to Anyone. Lesson 1. Use your eyes and smile for first impressions. 80% of first impressions are the way we look and move. In fact, studies have suggested that emotional reactions occur in our brains before we even have time to register any reaction to somebody. The author advises against quick smiles. When you interact with somebody, you should start by looking at their face for a second and pause. This pause will allow you to soak in their persona. You should then let out a big warm smile, the kind that floods across your face. Let this flood overflow into smiling with your eyes. While engaged with the flooding smile, you should also maintain eye contact. Most people will respect you more if you maintain strong eye contact, because this ability is associated with intelligence and abstract thinking. The author's second technique builds on the importance of maintaining eye contact. She describes how we should adopt sticky eyes. This means we should not break eye contact even after they have finished speaking. Once we've decided to break eye contact, we should do so reluctantly and slowly. The author believes this approach will send a message to others to comprehend their conversation and respect them as an individual. When we're seeking romance, we should utilize what the author describes as epoxy eyes. If we're romantically interested in someone, maintain deep eye contact with them even when they're not the one talking. If they happen to be interested in you, keeping eye contact with them while they are a listener can be an effective aphrodisiac. Lesson 2. Excel in small talks. The author advises not to worry too much about what we're saying. Instead, we should attempt to match the mood of the audience. The easiest and broader approach to take is simply ensuring our words will put people at ease. Doing this will help make us sound passionate. As long as our words are putting the audience at ease, we can focus more on the tone of what we're saying. 80% of our communication has nothing to do with our choice of words. When we introduce people, we should always offer an exciting point for the conversation to flow from. Offering an unbaited hook when starting a conversation will likely lead to awkwardness. A good word detective can identify their conversation partner's preferred topic just by listening to every word said. We will become more appealing in others' minds if we learn how to keep the spotlight shining on them. Lesson 3. Practice starting a conversation. The author suggests always carrying or wearing something slightly unusual. Just by possessing these objects, other people's attention will immediately draw towards us. It is also recommended to make small talk by commenting on other people's attire. Asking people we know to make introductions with other people can also provide an immediate icebreaker. Eavesdropping in group context is not considered rude. It shows our curiosity. So we shouldn't be scared to eavesdrop on other conversations within the group and say something like, excuse me, I couldn't help it over here. If somebody asks us where we're from, we should always avoid giving them a one word answer. We can use this as an opportunity to describe interesting parts of our life. We should always avoid one-word answers when somebody asks what we do for work. Embellish our answer with fascinating facts about our role, company, or even our job history. Lesson 4. Make others feel special. A common mistake we make is immediately agreeing with another person. Instead of jumping in right away with me too, we should wait and listen. The other person will be influenced more if we wait to agree. Whenever possible, we should start sentences with the word you. Starting conversation with this word will immediately grab our listeners' attention. If we're meeting a group of people, we should greet each person with a distinct smile, rather than smiling at the group. Lesson 5. Explore challenging conversation topics. We should never make a joke at anyone else's expense. We may get some cheap laughs in the short term, but we will pay for this joke in the long run. We should always consider the receiver of our news before throwing it out to them, and we should ensure that we deliver any news with appropriate emotions. Whenever someone persists in questioning us on an unwelcome subject, we can simply repeat our original response. We must use precisely the same words in precisely the same tone of voice. Hearing it again like that usually quiets them down. Lesson 6. Master talking to a celebrity. When chatting with a celebrity, we should never compliment their work. Instead, we should say that we've gained insight from their work. We must also avoid singling out any accomplishments that are long in the past for the celebrity. We should just choose one of their recent accomplishments to show we're not starstruck. Lesson 7. Sound like you understand people's passion. The author describes gobbledygook as the language of other professions. We should learn a minimal amount of information about a wide range of topics so we can sound like an insider. The most effective way of doing this is finding an insider to teach us some lingo, as well as learning some of the jargon within a profession. 
we must also identify the hot issues within a field. Every industry has their own burning concepts that only specialists will know about. If we learn these hot issues, we become infinitely more interesting. Reading magazines pertaining to the industry we will be encountering also helps to learn insider news. In conclusion, how to talk to anyone is a collection of actionable tips to help us master the art of human communication, leaving great first impressions, and making people feel comfortable around us in all walks of life. Are you a good conversationalist? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on my new content. You can also get a free copy of the audiobook by clicking the link in the description. Until next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.